it's 6 30. i'll call the meeting to order is uh all the selectmen are here town manager and the town clerk is here uh we have people in the waiting room to join us later on is uh please stand with me and salute the flag Allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. And, and to the Republic, Republic for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Is uh, you have the approval of the May twenty sixth meeting minutes. I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes as presented. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. And myself was yes, and Mark was not there, so he can recuse himself. Um, Patty, did we have any uh, thing for public comment? No, we don't. Okay, we have no public hearing. Is um, we might as well jump right down to the appointments for the uh, school board district director. Is uh, Stephanie Rochefort is uh, currently serving. Is um, and uh, he's asking to be reappointed, and we also have Ken Powers who would uh, like to be appointed. Now we only have the one opening yes yes that's what i thought so um is uh <clears throat> ken why don't you give us a bit of your background well i'm in uh, or i was in finance for 20 years um i worked in a loan office i managed the office um up in scarborough so i did that for 20 years i stopped doing that in november uh to become a full-time realtor in uh north Broward. Basically, that's it. I did the same job for 20 years and then stopped and taken a different path, kind of uh, doing the real estate business. And that's basically what I do. I, I volunteered at the uh, middle school uh, football program for five or six years. Now I'm working our, I'm up at the high school, coaching up with them now. So that's what I've been up to. Um, when I spoke to Jay earlier today, he, he had said that there were two openings also. So I don't know. If there's just one, there's just one. But I was under the impression there were two. It, um, there is just one, correct? That's what I have. Yeah, that's what I thought that uh, we had the others. So, uh, okay. so what, what, what makes you interested in the sewer? So I'd like to get involved in the town. I, that's basically what I've, my, my goal is to get involved somehow. And I mean, this is on a very limited limited basis once a month meetings things like that but i that's that's my primary goal is to get involved in the town and uh this seemed like a really uh promising good way to do it anybody have questions for ken no no is um all right thank you ken is stephanie yeah, thank you how you doing stephanie i'm good and how are you today not too bad is um you know you've served for three years on the the district and uh you expressed interest in uh being reappointed and first i do want to clarify that we have two openings at our last meeting dustin said that he was not going to be continuing because he has signed up for another volunteer opportunity and i guess that he didn't do the official notification but he did tell us that at our last meeting oh. So we may have two openings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it'll, that'll make it a little bit easier. Yeah. Is, um, is, uh, is, well, Stephanie, just, just fill us in a little bit about what's been going on for the last three years. Well, there has been great strides in the last three years. When I was first on the board, there was a lot of disconnect between the, the employees of the Berwick Sewer District, the uh, worker bees at the plant level, and the board. And now having um, people on board, we have, everyone has different talents. And what I bring to it is I have the wastewater background. 
So I'm helping the communication between the rest of the board and the employees where I can say, yes, this is a need. Yes, this is, he's not feeding you a line. This really needs to happen. We've been able to stress some. Um, in the wastewater field, the top three things are safety, compliance, and then money. And I know that might not be what your board wants to hear, but we're very proud that um, we have a wonderful safety record and we've been able to make a lot of improvements for the safety of the employees. We have a wonderful compliance record. We were, you know, I came in with this whole cloud over us with the Clean Water Act violation and we're getting a much better, um, goodness, the public and the, um, Regulators for the state of Maine are very impressed with the place now, and we are able to do that in a cost-effective and staying on budget manner. And I just feel like the board is in a really good place now, and I want to stick with it. Any questions for Stephanie? No. Oh. Is um well is uh you know we we hear that there are two openings. We we only have one official opening. Is um. Is, is, but what we can do is we can uh, appoint Ken, you know, as uh, a trustee pending the resignation of Dustin. It was one way we could do it. Um, does anybody have any uh, questions or ideas on that? Uh, it seems like a reasonable situation or a recommendation. I think that uh, from my perspective, uh, I think Stephanie, you have the background that I'm looking for and somebody who's serving in that position. I think Ken, I really appreciate you um, pointing up to, to um, take that position if it is available. Um, I would certainly think that you would have some experience that they could benefit from. So if that, uh, if there are two positions, I think they're both certainly great, uh, great candidates and, and well qualified to do so. Anybody else? Um, well, I'll, I'll entertain a mo motion to uh, reappoint Stephanie. So I'm My motion to reappoint Stephanie. We have a motion in a second. Is I'll go through the roll. Is Mark? Yes. Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. Ed? Yes. And myself is a yes. It's 5 0, Patty. And for uh, Ken is, um, like I said, is, is uh, we can uh, appoint you with the understanding that when uh, we have the official resignation from Dustin, then you can fill in. Is uh, So do I have a motion? So moved. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. All right. Any further discussion? So I'll go through the roll. Is uh, Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. Mark? Yes. Ed? Yes. And myself is a yes. Five, nothing patty. Is thank you both. Is uh, I look forward to working with you in the future. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do we have nothing under unfinished business? Um, town manager's report. I have a few things. Um, just so everybody's aware, the town office hours, we've adjusted those. Uh, we started with a little bit different hours, but now we're trying to get everybody back to 37 and a half hours. So the town office uh, will be open Monday through Wednesday from 8 to uh, uh, 5.30. And then on Thursdays from... Uh, eight to seven. Uh, the office will be closed to the public at six o'clock on Thursdays, uh, just so that the staff gets an opportunity to close up uh, drawers and, and balance. Um, Fridays, we're going to be closed for the time being, um, and we'll readdress that um, as this pandemic hopefully slows down. Um, also announced that on June uh, 30th, the office will be closed. It's the end of the year for us, and there's a lot of uh, work to be done. So we close out our books and um, prepare for the audit. The auditors have been doing a, I'd say they're in, but they're doing it remotely, uh, doing a three or four day uh, pre-audit, keeping Lisa Vargas extremely busy. Um, I sent you out a request about the flagpole at the fire station. Has anybody um, 
had an opportunity to think about that and what they want to do um, for the car that was destroyed. Um, it was the uh, car value was only around 2000. Um, and the value was anywhere between five and 2000. Uh, the person's hoping to see 1300. Um, who'd the thought? Um, also, um, I've had several, I've had a, uh, a request about looking to buy the old fire station once we move into the new one. Um, I'm not sure what the asking price is. I know um, I've had um, one of the realtors give me a price of around 250,000 uh, to 300,000 in value, but there wasn't really much to compare it with. But think about that because the new station, we are expecting it to be open, um, move in in September. They're making great progress. And, it's, and if you haven't been over to see the site, it's, it's quite an attractive building and it's gonna be very functional. Uh, also, um, I sent out to you the library uh, memorandum of agreement. If it passes on the warrant on the 14th, um, you'll have to approve that on the June 23rd. It's been through our attorneys. We've been through several rewrites and back and forth. And uh, this last one, the lawyers felt that it was covering everything that they felt we should have. So it was good to go. Uh, so take a chance, take an opportunity to read through that and let me know if you have any questions. We also hired a new recreation director, Isaac Spivey. Of Spivey. He uh, is coming uh, from Vermont originally. He worked for the city of Colchester for quite a few years, five or six years in their department. Uh, he, his wife took a job in New Hampshire at uh, uh, University of New Hampshire in Durham and he was looking to transition and he was one of uh, four candidates in the final uh, interviews but he uh, and we've offered him the position and he has accepted it. He'll be starting July 1st and first meeting we have I'll make sure we introduce him to you um, either in Zoom or by um, in live. Uh, there was also a question about the two hour parking limit over in front of the subway and Devin Dukes, uh, Colbert, Coldbrook uh, Brewing or Cold Stone Brewing. It's really uh, restricting their customers to get to over there. Um, but uh, so it's something that we've had in place. We put up new signs and nobody was really realizing it was a two hour limit. And now they are at the request of the uh, owners of the buildings um, at Devon Duke and uh, Subway. So that's something that you as a board have to decide if you want to change that or not. Uh, James has been doing research on the Rochester Street parking uh, that uh, was done in the traffic study. He sent out the information to the police and fire in both departments. Uh, object to uh, changing the traffic pattern there. One being that fire trucks may have difficulty getting up through there if they have to, with only one lane and it's quite a bit of traffic and the police felt the same way. MDOT though gave us uh, the nod that we could do that and we were waiting for a written, uh, our, a written document saying that we could do that. So there's, that's being questioned and I know uh, we've looked at that um, over the last year of uh, opening up that side of the road in Rochester Street to um, parking next to the town office. So that's something we're gonna have to address um, pretty soon. Uh, right now, Norris has been in the building. They were there today, I take it, Patty? Yes. They're putting in a, a new uh, entry keypad, security keypad. Um, along with smoke alarms. The building has not had smoke alarms and we uh, finally have smoke alarms. So that they said they'll be done, I guess next week, uh, mm -hmm. that we budgeted for that and that is in. Uh, Great Falls Construction got back to, uh, my, got to me about the credit enhancement agreement. Uh, they have a different attorney than what they had before, but we're setting up a meeting with our attorney uh, Jana Cook Mueller from Bernstein Shore, who writes these uh, credit enhancements agreements and they've changed since the last one she did. Uh, so we're setting up near the end of the month to meet uh, Great Falls 
uh, and uh, myself, James, and uh, Tom, you're invited. But if uh, it should um, be a good meeting, it seems like we're all on the same page, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so that's that's all I have for today. Have you met the, the superintendent, Steve, from uh, Great Falls? Uh, I haven't. He's there. They've been there all week. They're working on the uh, the duplex. Oh, I haven't been up there. I, I thought well, they, like, they called me. They're looking for they're looking for an electrician, and they're looking for help. So if anyone no, needs a job, cotton or whatever, they're looking for both. Yeah. Huh. So it sounds like they're going to get the duplex up and running. Oh, okay. Because I I know that they were talking to somebody about bu uh, buying it from them, but that that's good. I, I didn't realize they were there. It's good to know. So they they're. There's a meeting. They're having another public forum later this month. Uh, so we're, James and I are hoping we'll see renditions um, for what their plans are. Um, pretty exciting, but we're moving forward with that. And that's a good sign. That's all I have. So the, how many people from the town, how many people from Berwick are still working from home? Um, nobody. Nobody? The, the, okay. the code enforcement officer is, is uh, probably the only one, but she has office hours and she also has uh, a by appointment only. So, but she's, she's, uh, she's busy. There's a lot of building going on. Uh, she's out on our, our fire station site quite a bit. Um, and um, she's tough as nails. So she's uh, doing a good job, but she's available. Um, and her hours are on the website. And also if you call into the office, we can tell you what her hours are. That's all I have. Thank you. Is um, let's talk a little bit about the the flagpole damage in that car over at the fire station. That happened a couple of months ago, and I'd I'd like to put this this to bed as soon as possible. Um, I'm I'm really upset that the insurance company will not cover this. I cannot imagine their reasoning, but Steve said he uh, had quite a few arguments with them, and uh, they won't budge on it. Um, I think I think we owe the person, you know, compensation for the car. Is uh, I know I'd asked Steve for, you know, for the last couple of weeks to get a price from the people. You said what, thirteen hundred dollars, Steve? That's what they're looking for, yeah. And it was a, it was like a, a two thousand and two Honda Civic. Honda Civic. So, um, <clears throat> probably more money than I'd pay for a Honda Civic, but I wouldn't buy a Honda Civic anyways. <laughs> Well, I agree with Tom. We should be taking care of that. There shouldn't be any argument about it. We should take care of it. What happens now? Any argument Can we argue that. with the town? Get more insurance? Another company to insure us? Oh, MMA covers us at a very reasonable rate. And it's the same thing would happen with another insurance company. They're going to utilize the Tort Claim Act and, and say that it's something that we weren't responsible for. So, um, I've had this. It's just to me, it doesn't make any sense. But no, it's why bullshit. doesn't the kids? Does does did he have car insurance? Does the car insurance cover it at all? <clears throat> no, I I doubt he had uh, collision. He probably has to, he has to have liability. So is um was the car registered in New Hampshire? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. Well, no, I I thought I had heard someplace that it was because you don't need insurance in New Hampshire. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's one of the things. That's why a lot of people register in New Hampshire because we don't need to have insurance. And where did where did we get the figure of thirteen hundred from? Is I that... looked it up in the blue book. Oh, well, she gave me the number for thirteen hundred. Sure. I looked it up in the blue book, and it ranged from five hundred to two thousand. Depend. You know, it depends on mileage, of course. Yeah, it depends on that particular vehicle. They have uh, they're horrendous for transmission issues, but I mean, that's besides the point. It's not his fault. It's a uh, town property. Our flagpole collapsed on his vehicle. You know, it's, it's either lack of maintenance or whatever. It's, it's, it's not his fault. So I it rusted it's, through. It was a metal yeah. pipe. So we might as well. I mean, it's just, it's cheaper to pay it than go through an insurance company anyway, because then it's just going to increase our rates. So pay it and put it to bed. Steve, where, where would the money from that, something like that come from? Contingency. Contingency? Okay. So it uh, seems like the consensus is that we need to do something. Is, uh, 
It, um, it, one other thing that, you know, you mentioned, Steve, was the, the Rochester Street parking. You're talking about along, alongside the town hall here, correct? Yes. Where, and you said the police chief and fire chief said that, you know, they thought it would restrict the traffic flow through there too much. Yeah. An ability for the fire trucks to get up through if it was, traffic was backed up. I understand their point. It's that's their public. No, it, it, when when the uh, when James and I were out there last year with uh, I can't remember his name doing the the uh, looking at the crosswalks and parking and things is, is we measured across there and the it's the total width of the road is more than three lanes of traffic, you know. So if we took up just part of it with eight feet with parking space, is uh, you're still going to have more two lanes worth of traffic open, no roadway there. So I, no, we'll look at it again. We'll take some measurements, but I, I think it can be managed. I think it's something that we need to utilize. Well, Tom, look at South Berwick. They park on both sides of the road for the stores, yeah. the fire trucks. So, I mean, that's parked on both sides. Rural Mill right. will be on one side. Right. So, is, um, um, and one thing that uh, Patty and I talked about before the meeting is, uh, we were wondering if you were going to bring it up, Steve, was um, is uh, the vote is July 14th now, and that is one of our regular meeting dates. Is um, So, is, you no know, in the past we have, you know, only held one meeting in July is uh, I don't know if there's going to be anything too major coming up in July, Steve. Do you have a feeling for that? No, it shouldn't be. So is, uh, maybe that's something that we want to look at it. Just having one meeting in July, you know, have it the second meeting. Yeah. So yeah, in August, you're going to have a tax commitment coming up and, um, the budget would have passed, so we'll see what that brings. Hopefully, uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up is also is I sent you all the financial reports uh, for the end of May. If you have any questions, revenue side looks like it's coming in pretty good. Uh, it's it's the following next year that I'm a little worried about, but the governor opened up everything for July one, so maybe we'll still get our tourists. Um, but otherwise, we're a little over in the transfer station public works but I, otherwise we're pretty much on track and we had over in the building but I, I gave you a rundown of areas to look at right any questions let me know or give Lisa Vargas a call thank you Steve um, hey Steve I, I see it in the paperwork that um, Patty sent over we cut a check for nine almost nine hundred thousand to Landry French yeah close to that yeah what what um they get like that once a month. You're not going to let them get overextended with us, right? I mean, they're not going to oh, no, get them no. all they're, they're up to date. Idea. They're up to date. We still have just under three million left uh, to finish up what they're done, and they're right on track. They uh, they're making sure that their contractors are getting paid, from what I can tell. Oh and, yeah, they, and, I just uh, don't want to see them front load it. No, no, we're we have the next meeting we have with them in July. Is going to be a budget, another budget meeting. But they, anytime I request budget numbers, they Nick is gets it right to me. So I like keep an eye on it. But and I want to make sure they get paid because they have you know they have a lot of people working over there. And um, I know Nick was saying on some of his sites that they have people have been sick and they have their they're behind schedule because of shortage of people uh, because of the pandemic. But we've been fortunate to have everybody healthy and. Uh, getting the work done looks nice. And speaking speaking about the fire station and the budget, you know, we we had a budget breakdown a week or so ago, and um, is even with the add-ons that we weren't expected, is uh, we're still very close to being on budget. Is right now I think we're just slightly over, but we're looking at some other savings down the road. Yeah. So is uh, I'm I'm really happy with what's been going on. Yeah. Plus, the, uh, if you look at your financial reports, you'll see the bond and you'll see the interest we've earned uh, from having that sit there um, and coming out slowly. We've, we've done very well. So uh, we're, we definitely should come in on budget. And they're, they're very aware of that, that. We want them to come in on budget. And they're looking for savings. Um, 
all the time. All right. Thank you, Steve. Yep. Um, I have no communications. That brings us to the account payable. Um, I have a payroll warrant 2049 for June 4th, 2020 for the amount of $61,392 and 65 cents. Is I have a payroll warrant 2050 from June 11th, 2020 for the amount of $60,056.75. And account payable warrant 2050 for June 11th, 2020. And this is one mark where we, uh, we paid both Landry French and the school. So we have an amount of $1,661,739.73. I uh, make a motion that we uh, pay our bills. Second it. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? No. I'll go through the roll. Mark? Yes. Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. And myself is a yes. Thank you. Um, the request for the extension of the license for the Corner Point Bruin has been pulled. Is uh, That has already been taken care of through the planning board, I guess. So next day is for the uh, setting the polling hours for a July 14th town election. Is uh, town clerk is going to recommend 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. And she's also going to request that the uh, town offices be closed that day. Correct, Patty? Yes, thank you. <laughs> and then I'll need a motion that you'll cancel your um, July 14th meeting. Right. right. So, so we have a motion. Both. Is that a motion? Yes. Do I have a second? All three. <laughs> I'll second. All right. Is, uh, I'll go through the roll. Is Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. Mark? Yes. Ed? Yes. And myself is a yes. Thank you. Thank you. And we need a vote to close the town office on July 14th. So move. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? No. I'll go through the roll again. It is Noah? Yes. Ken? Yes. Ed? Yes. Mark? Yes. And myself is a yes. So our next item is a poll petition from uh, Central Maine Power. Uh, 75 Pine Hill Road is, uh, looks like they'd want to take an existing poll and move it about 80 feet. Is, um, <clears throat> they seem to be moving a lot of polls lately, is, uh, but they won't move the one at the end of our new access road, Steve. How come? Well, they, they've asked permission to do, a, they have 25 new poles to place throughout this area. And uh, so they're going to be using, they've asked Great Falls if they could stage at their uh, parking lot, and they're very happy to be able to do that. So, uh, but 25, and hopefully one of them is ours going in for the new station. Why, why can't we take that pole out uh, on that one way going down to Route, route uh, 9 from the police station? Beside the old school, that road comes out. There's a damn pole right in the middle of it. Oh. <laughs> Why can't that be moved? That was supposed to be moved during that project with Bateman. Right. And somehow it, it slipped under the radar and never got moved. And, you know, so I believe that the uh, developer was supposed to pay to have that moved. And uh, is good luck in trying to get that money from them. So. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, All right, look, we have a. Uh, um, looking at the request, uh, are they moving a poll or are they adding a new poll? Because I, I kind of think it's a new poll. Let's see. The drawing says new CMP poll 75 
A. Yeah, it just looks like an, an additional pole in between. Oh, I see. Two. Yeah, I thought they were moving one. Yep. No, it is a new pole. I move we accept the poll permit from CMP as, as presented. I'll second it. Any further discussion? Nope. Is, uh, go through the ro roll. Is Mike? Yes. Ed? Yes. Ken? Yes. Noah? Yes. And myself is a yes. At 5 0, Patty. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, we have nothing else on our agenda. Is um, is uh, I'll uh, put it out there for Patty that she will need people to come in and sign warrants as soon yes, as possible. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the poll petition. And, the and poll. also, just a note: the school um, rescinded their original warrant. There's now a new warrant which combines. There's now going to be four questions for voters. They will be having their public hearing on that on June 23rd. Um, the same that'll night be as held over Zoom. People can call in or Zoom in. But anyway, there'll be more information out on that. But I have um, new warrants to sign for that. So, is, uh, that's the same night as our next meeting, also, correct? Yes. So, so Steve Connolly will not be attending. Our meeting, anyway. When, when, do, when do we get to meet the new superintendent? Is that she takes over in July 1st, I believe, is the same, I believe they have the same fiscal year, is when she yeah. takes over, is, um, um, I don't know, is, uh, I'll be seeing her on, on Friday, is, uh, they've asked uh, BCTV, the, the Noble High School has asked BCTV to help them, uh, stream out their uh, graduation ceremonies so that'll be happening on friday afternoon and um so could you ask her tom if she could come to a meeting some night sure i'm sure okay. I'm, glad she, I'm sure she'd be glad to yep good and, um so um any other business for anybody tom the 23rd is also our public hearing for our budget is it not yes it is yes you know, and, and we still have to decide how we're going to manage that one you know, with whether we're going to, you know, do it similar to what the planning board has been doing and doing it a combination of live and Zoom. And, uh, but that's something we'll uh, talk about in the next week. So. Anything yeah, else? there won't be a vote at the um, school public hearing. Like typically each town goes and votes on each question. This will just be a public hearing. People can ask questions, but there will be no vote. The voting this year will happen at the poll. It'll be a secret ballot. Their sample ballot is up on our website, so people can look at that under departments, town clerk, elections, and there's a link. And speaking of, speaking about elections, Patty, thank you. Mm -hmm. is, um, no, is I just want to remind people to... Uh, Take advantage of the absentee ballots if you can. You know, save the uh, polling people here on July, in July, so that uh, we can have as many people mail in their ballots as possible. Yeah, that information is also on the website. Yeah. Anything okay. else? We have a motion to adjourn. So moved. A second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> All right. Thanks Thank a lot, guys. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.